Hi, I'm Captain Larry Bell with Texas Fishing Tips, and this is your weekly fishing report. Back lakes, back lakes, back lakes. All oh, this down here in Cottonwood Bayou, get down in these back lakes. Man, get back in here, wade some of this area, work this area, drift it. If you don't want to get out of your boat, you can. You can anchor up and hit some of these guts and these edges that are back in these areas here. A ton of bait that's stacked in here. One thing that's been a consistent factor the last week, week and a half, is the amount of water that we've had in here. We've had tons and tons of water extra water that's coming here and pushed all back in here. It's pushing fish further back in these lakes. Uh, you'll find little pods of redfish that are pushing back in here, and they're all different sizes that are mixed in there with them. You'll find some 16s to 19s. You may find another little pod that's got 21s to 26s in there, and you may another, find another little pod that's got 25s to 28s and maybe a few overs mixed in there with it. But all these areas back here, not just strictly in, in, in the Cottonwood back, back lake, but all these back lake areas, get into these things and work them. A lot of these are better weighting than others. There's shell pads that are mixed in and around at these edges, these little lakes and these little uh, islands that are all back in here. Work these things. Find your bait. Find these areas that are holding these fish that are up and down this area here. Again, with the, with the amount of water that's pushed in here, you can really find some fish that are pushed way back up in here. Top water bait has been really good, especially in these back lake areas. Man, you can work that top water all over that thing. You can really use it as an indicator bait for you. Uh, to search these fish to get blow ups if you're not finding the pods or seeing the pods for whatever reason then throw that top water bait because that thing will indicate to you because those fish will they'll slap at it they may not take it but they'll, they'll slap at it and again if you've got somebody with you have them throw a plastic back right behind that where that's at and you'll have an opportunity to get them hooked up on that but again work these all these back lakes take advantage of where this water level is right now because at some point it's going to drop back out and once it does these areas back here will be a little bit more difficult to get to Mustang Lake, all back in here. This little area here, again, with our higher waters, all this has become accessible even more so. Back to these back areas here, you've got a nice little back lake area that's here off to the right-hand side as you come into Mustang. Back down here through the ICW. Work your way down here. Work around Mustang Edge. That's all nice and weightable. Another thing that you need to be aware of in there, there are alligators around that area. So if you're going to get out of the boat, make sure you're aware that they, they are around there. So you may want to stay in the boat and use a trolling motor if you want to. This little area that comes back up in here to this back lake, right back up in here, on down the ICW here, and there's another little back lake entrance that pushes you back up into this area, this little back lake. With the water levels the way that they are, you can get on your trolling motor, providing that you have one, and you got a skinny enough running boat that doesn't, doesn't sink down or draft too much water. You can get back up into these areas right now. There, there's some shell pads that are in some of these mouths, so you have to be aware of those and where they're at. But there are opportunities once you get back in these areas here because, again, with the amount of water that's pushed in here, it's pushed fish back in here. There's been some decent trout that have caught out of here. Flounder, uh, come across a few flounder ever so often. And, again, the redfish. Redfish are really starting to stack up, down and up and down this ICW. And they get off in these little back lake areas, and they're out there exploring. So you can have an opportunity, you'll find a, a pot of these fish that are cruising around back here on these back lakes, these back shorelines. Again, pay attention to what those tides are doing. Pay attention to your water levels. Because at any point in time, again, this, this, this uh, plethora of water that we have that's in here is going to drop back out and start to level, level out on us and, and uh, normalize. And once that happens, some of these access to these, these uh, back lakes will not be accessible. But that said, again, topwater bait's been good back in this area here. The uh, supermodel rigged up weedless has been good back in here. You can throw the regular model. The burner shads have been pretty good back in this area as well. Uh, any of one of those baits, if you work all these areas in here with that, again, I like to use the, the top water bait in these areas to really find the grass, find the edges. You can find some pockets that are back in some of these areas and just work that top water bait and see if you can get some takes and blow ups. Throw those burners in there right behind it and have a lot of fun with catching these redfish back in these back lakes. Back shoreline down here in Mesquite. Just after off a of, off of Bray Cove down here by the old Texas Parks and Wildlife place there. A little cut, little edge that's back in this area there that you can work all that. There's been some fish that have been holding back up in that back lake back there. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll see the old pier that used to be there that's gone from Harvey. Uh, there's a deep gut that runs back up into that little back lake there. You're not, you can't wait it. It's too deep right now with the tides at the way they are. And it's awful soft down the bottom of that thing. But you can go down the edge or you can get on your boat and get on your trolling motor and work that area back in there. Uh, just look, see if you got bait working back in that area and see if you can see some fish that are tailing there. There have been a few, seen a few small schools of redfish that are tailing back in some of these back lakes. Work this whole back shoreline. 
there have been some flounder that have peeled off here. Now, flounder for me is always a bonus fish because I'm not necessarily targeting, but so ever so often we get a we get a little lucky and we pull one out of there. So it's always exciting to to pull a flounder off there. So we have pulled a few flounder off this back shoreline. Just be aware of that. Lots of sand, scattered mud, skip that the the, uh, the holes and stuff in here when you're wading all this area. Be just be careful when you're walking through there. There are all lots of holes that are back in this, and as you get closer down to cedar, now that. It, Great news about cedar, the water is flowing through there. They're not quite finished with it yet, but that water is flowing through there and the bait's starting to raft through that area there and there's starting to be a lot more bait that's gonna show up. So we're really looking forward to a, a great winter time and a great spring next year. As that continues to do that, it's been a great thing to see that all that's transpired since early in the, in the springtime. But again, work this area all the way down to the mouth of cedar on this left-hand side as if you're coming into it. Big shell pads that are all on that area there. They've been redfish. They've been cruising all over it. Again, the topwater bait's been good. Pay attention to uh, what your water's doing. If you got an incoming or outgoing there, again with that flow coming through the through the Cedar Bayou area, it's become uh, starting to become a little bit more productive each and every day that passes. It's going to get better and better. Look for your bait working in here. Throw your plastics in here. Whatever you like. Again, I'm right now. I'm throwing a lot of topwater baits and, and following them up with the top. Uh, the plastics right behind those with clients that are throwing into this area get it weedless because there is a lot of shell that's in here if you're not able to control your your uh, distance and how far you work the bait down there do, do the weedless setup put a popping cork put the put that uh, plastic underneath that popping cork and work another bait that's been really good too is a marker 54 jerk shrimp it's been great underneath the popping cork in this area work the edges work that gut work up in that area where all that shell is at uh, the edge of uh, cedar bayou mouth you know if you got that uh, cut that runs all the way to the back. It's been another good area that's been holding some fish on either side of that mouth. Those are areas of, of emphasis that you really want to pay attention to as you're working these baits. Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Larry Bell.